The FBI, or Federal Bureau of Investigation, has kept tabs on myriad people throughout its long history. Along with serial killers, radical political figures, and embezzlers, the FBI has investigated actors, artists, athletes, and even a fast food colonel. The reasons for these investigations are vast, and thanks to the Freedom of Information Act, we get to know all the top secret details. So, today we're cracking the case on the most surprising people the FBI kept files on, and why. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Channel. After that, leave a comment and let us know what other dirty laundry you would like to see investigated. All right, investigators, let's get investigating. The creator of the Peanuts comics, Charles M. Schultz, became a person of interest for the FBI in 1986 after receiving bizarre correspondence from a man in Eugene, Oregon. The man penned 13 pages directed at Schultz in which he showed a very apparent hostility to President Ronald Reagan, which manifested itself through, uh, the cartoon dog Snoopy. The writer even sent Schultz his own version of Peanuts. In one panel, Snoopy types Mein Kampf, definitely not what we expected after all his run-ins with the Red Baron. Schultz's comics distributor characterized the letters as nonsensical and called the writer mad as a hatter. Still, he did get a few things right. Schultz was friends with Reagan, and perhaps their shared views subconsciously seeped their way into Peanuts comics. But it's unlikely that those views explicitly showed up in strips where Snoopy delivers a glowing endorsement of a government policy. The FBI file on Schultz also contains a letter this anonymous man sent to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, in which he admits to using psychotropic drugs for 12 years. And suddenly, everything makes sense. In the early 2000s, another famous comic creator became the subject of a 213-page FBI file, Marvel's Stan Lee. Though the scandal is recent enough to have been largely redacted for privacy's sake, we do know that it involved bankruptcy, fraud, stock manipulation, political fundraising, Bill and Hillary Clinton, Cher, Diana Ross, Spider-Man, the X-Men, and the Incredible Hulk. Now, that's a crossover event that gives Endgame a run for its money. The center of this controversy was not Lee, but his then-business partner, Peter F. Paul through their company, Stanley Media. After Lee's break with his namesake company, Stanley Media shareholders unsuccessfully sued for the rights to Lee's lucrative characters, which led to all kinds of accusations of financial shenanigans. His FBI file contains at least four mentions of Spider-Man, another four of the Hulk, two of the X-Men, and one of Daredevil. As time lessens the need for redaction, the reasons for the involvement of these heroes should become clearer. Excelsior? After making a name for herself as a child star, Shirley Temple became a diplomat for the U.S. government. One of the FBI's jobs is to vet governmental candidates, so Temple received her very own 400-page write-up. The Bureau didn't find anything too scandalous, but there were some surprises, including Temple being the target of multiple assassination attempts. One would-be killer mailed a suspected letter bomb to MGM Studios with, I'd like to kill Shirley, written on the side. Another brought a gun to a performance to attack Temple, whom she believed to have stolen her daughter's soul. Apparently, she thought Temple was a haunted camera or something. Then, as the U.S. ambassador to Ghana, Temple also became a potential target for the Japanese Red Army. Jeez, sounds like someone needs to throw some animal crackers in their soup and calm down. One of the FBI's duties is to investigate threats made against prominent people. Typically, those prominent people are major celebrities or politicians. But in 1974, it was KFC founder Colonel Harlan Sanders who became the victim of a death threat. A letter sent to Sanders informed him that he was in grave danger of being murdered. It was attributed to the U.S. Armed Forces and was written by someone calling themselves the General. The letter went on to say, For details, go to any recruiting station and call the Los Angeles Nike Missile Base. Someone at KFC contacted the Bureau, who interviewed Sanders but ultimately told him they could not afford him protection. Although, considering the famously quarrelsome Sanders once opened fire on a business rival, he might not have needed that much protection. And in 2011, KFC spokesman Rick Maynard said, We have no reason to believe the anonymous letter was anything more than a prank. Not one element of this bizarre tale was finger-licking good. Actress and comedian Lucille Ball of I Love Lucy fame accrued a 150-page FBI file which left no one laughing. The file detailed her allegedly communist-friendly activity in the 1930s, long before the Soviet Union threw America into a tailspin called the Red Scare. 
By the time Ball testified for the House Un-American Activities Committee in 1953, she stated she had never been a member of the Communist Party to her knowledge. The FBI eventually concluded that a review of the subject's file reflects no activity that would warrant her inclusion on the security index. And all of this was dramatized in Aaron Sorkin's 2021 film, Being the Ricardos. As for her early sympathies, Ball blamed her socialist grandfather. Celebrated comedy duo Bud Abbott and Lou Costello have separate FBI files with similarly filthy content. According to a police informant, Abbott owned 1,500 reels of obscene motion pictures, which he would show guests on his at-home projector. Reportedly, the police informant was approached by Abbott to furnish some girls for a private party. While this kind of activity is somewhat ironic for the straight man of the duo, Costello was no slouch when it came to debaucherous deeds of his own. He was said to have the largest library of obscene films in Hollywood. The police informant detailed a time when two women put on a lewd performance for Lou Costello while he was in Portland in connection with the premiere of a motion picture. Apparently, the girls were paid $50 apiece for their part in the show. That's one way to celebrate a movie's release. In 1963, a band called The Kingsmen was accused of putting secret messages in their cover of Richard Berry's song, Louie Louie. The FBI followed a lead that claimed eager-eared listeners could hear dirty words when their records were played at 33 RPM. They also collected several different interpretations of the lyrics, which were all sent to the lab for analysis. In 2016, Kingsman guitarist Mike Mitchell recalled that FBI agents surveilled their shows, saying they'd stand next to the speakers to see if we were singing anything off-color. It was a different time. After 119 pages of investigation, and probably lots of hearing loss, the FBI discovered no evidence of obscenity. The best part? There actually is an expletive in Louie Louie. You can hear drummer Lynn Easton yell a certain four-letter word 54 seconds into the studio recording. That's a far cry from corrupting America's youth, but it means the FBI wasn't completely off base. Like Mitchell said, it was a different time. In the early 1990s, Apple co-founder Steve Jobs was vetted by the FBI so he could serve on President George H.W. Bush's Export Council. According to the FBI's nearly 200-page file, Jobs used illegal drugs, including marijuana and LSD, while attending college. Jobs' file also describes him as a deceptive individual who was not completely forthright and honest. And for anyone who has a passing knowledge of Jobs' persona, or has seen one of the movies they made about him, this isn't exactly surprising. Despite his genius intellect, Jobs' brilliance was not reflected in his academics. Famously a college dropout, the tech mogul's FBI file also exposed his high school GPA at just 2.65. That should make everyone feel a little better about their report cards. At the height of their popularity, all eyes were on the Beatles, including those of the FBI. Wouldn't that be the FBI's? Over the years, it was John Lennon who garnered the most attention from the Bureau, notably with an investigation into whether his and Yoko Ono's naked album cover for Unfinished Music No. 1, Two Virgins, constituted obscenity. But the FBI's interest in the Beatles actually started much earlier than that. The Fab Four initially found themselves under scrutiny during their first year in America. Upon landing in San Francisco on August 18, 1964, they were greeted by more than 5,000 screaming fans. The crowds quickly grew unruly, resulting in several injuries and arrests. This event was documented by the FBI, which continued to monitor the Beatles' shows for the remainder of their American tour. Petty crimes and injuries were incidental, however. The real reason for the FBI's surveillance was the potential for racial unrest. According to their FBI file, the Beatles' crowds constituted a perfect vehicle for riots. Luckily, those riots never manifested, but race did become an issue in their concert in Jacksonville, Florida. The audience was originally going to be segregated, but the Beatles refused to play unless it was integrated. The venue bowed to their request, allowing all those Beatles fans to uh, <coughs> come together. Film producer and theme park Imagineer Walt Disney was investigated by the FBI and then recruited for the SAC. That's special agent in charge. Due to his influence over Hollywood at the time, Disney was trusted to provide resources and services for the Bureau, which mostly revolved around the production of FBI-oriented media. On top of a few segments for the original Mickey Mouse Clubhouse TV show, Disney also produced two feature-length films for the FBI, 1962's Moon Pilot and 1965's That Darn Cat. But this partnership wasn't exactly a happily ever after. 
Disney movies depicted FBI agents as slapstick comedic buffoons, and approval for the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse segments was sent out at the last possible moment. Though Walt remained an official liaison until his death, he wasn't permitted to make anything else for the FBI. Everyone's a critic. At a Chicago airport in late 1972, legendary Los Angeles Laker Wilt Chamberlain was dealing with a very common problem long delays and extra security checks. During the delay, Chamberlain was overheard saying, I may take over the plane. I am just so mad, I may shoot somebody. And that was a bit of a flagrant foul. After a mini investigation, it was determined that Chamberlain was not an actual security threat. He was, in fact, a very famous athlete just venting his frustrations. Despite this, the incident made headlines and grabbed the attention of the FBI. The plane incident only makes up a small portion of his 48-page file. The rest covers his alleged betting on basketball games, many of which were games he played in. Despite the quantity and seriousness of those allegations, Chamberlain was never convicted. The late Wu-Tang Clan rapper Russell Tyrone Jones, or Old Dirty Bastard, had a serious relationship with the FBI. Before his passing in 2004, Jones's 93-page file implicated him in everything from drug dealing to money laundering to gang activity to shootouts. The most perplexing inclusion is the newspaper clippings on the arrests of Sean Combs, or P. Diddy, and his then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez following a nightclub shooting. Why the FBI found that relevant to ODB remains curiously unclear. In other words, we're looking forward to the inevitable Netflix documentary. Which of these celebrity FBI files did you find the most surprising? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our weird history.